Well, hello all. Today we're going to make a music wand. We're going to make it out of a piece of um, microjet piping. I've just put through two wires. We have to strip off the insulation off the two wires. So there I've stripped off the insulation on that end. So now we've got both ends have been stripped. Next thing we need is we need to take a photo resistor. Right, now let's solder them. It's made a nice. wet solder joint that's now soldered the tape is right up to it and now we're just going to apply a little bit of heat And that's now should be insulated. Then we're going to pull this from the back through. We're going to pull this in to our wand, our music wand. And there we see the little uh, photo resistor, or light dependent resistor, LDR, and it's now sitting nicely at the end of the wand. And then this end we are going to attach to our pie picker. So our sound wand is working. Let's just go through the scale first. They see So the wand works by, the more you point it towards the light, the higher the note. Then as you lower the wand, the lower the note. So by the amount that you raise or lower the, no, the wand, so you increase the brightness that this little light dependent resistor is picking up, and that changes the note that you play. So you can play tunes by pointing the wand at a light or a dark uh, patch. One thing that really scares me is being bored, but it's not a problem for him. <laughs> hey, is that so nice? Let's have a look at 
our uh, circuiture. So here is our circuit from pins one to these are the general uh, input output pins. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine LEDs, and they all come and join to the earth via a 220 ohm resistor. Then we've got a piezo speaker that's attached to pin number 15. It's actually the end pin there and also is earthed. And two more components at the top there. There's our photoresistor attaches to the 3.3 volts and to the 26 pin. It's actually pin 31, but it's general input output pin 26. And then there's a 4 kilo ohm resistor that goes to ground. So this forms a voltage divider. And as the light changes this photoresistor's resistance, so this uh, general input output pin registers a higher or a lower voltage and that changes the tone of the note. So here we tap off between these two resistors, the one of which is changing according to the light, we tap it off at pin 26. not bored what a wonderful art that is <laughs> just one correction here this speaker's grounded it doesn't join through the resistor so the speaker goes to pin 15 and do its own ground it doesn't go through the resistor that the leds have so at the end of each school year, they love to get all the top students together. And I tell you, there's one thing we can say about all the top students. They're all getting like 10 A's or 8 A's. You know, every subject they do, they, they pass with distinction. And I can tell you one thing about those all those top students. Every one of them is not bored. And every one of them has a culture of science and of maths and of each subject. They make each subject into a, its own culture they immerse themselves in the subject they are interested in the subject they solve every single problem they can find related to the subject they work on it it's become their mission to just get that hey oh they're driven and isn't it wonderful they're not bored and they create a culture in to pass science and get their a in science they have to have a culture of science they do science, they do problems related, they think about it, they fantasize about it, they <laughs> do everything possible, they probably attend every single science lesson they can have. Now, contrast that with, um, let's say, the students that are not the top students. Let's just say the, the general run of the mole students. Now, those people just do the least amount possible to, to get through their matric and to just pass science with a 30% average. That's what you have to have to pass physical science. So they they often are bored and they often don't. I mean, they to get 30%, they don't have a culture of science. And they may have worked quite hard at it, but they've never mastered it. They've never immersed themselves. They've never conquered it. They've never made science their lapdog, their absolutely mastered it at all. So my hat off to those students who, those top students who have made physical science a culture. They have, as I say, there's, there's nothing they won't do to just improve themselves in that subject. And, and they're fascinated. They're interested. I can tell you, when you spend enough time on a subject, even, even the boring subjects become somewhat interesting when you, you're looking to see how you can make sure you don't drop even one mark in that subject. And they're not bored because it takes all their work. And yet you find those students often have extra murals and they do plays and they swim and they have an active life. They've somehow managed, obviously they do have some gray matter, but they somehow have managed to master all their, the subjects in which they get 10 distinctions. And uh, they they all rounded students, but I think there's so many more more people who, if they were 
instead of just sitting around on a parent board with nothing to do, why don't they just master it? One question at a time, master the subject. And then when you can do every, say there's 20 questions in the 10 in the chemistry, 10 in the physics, master that question and then go through all the questions on, let's say Doppler. And I can do anything related to Doppler. Doppler is just, ah, I've mastered. And then you become so happy and you've now beginning to immerse yourself in Doppler and in that aspect of physical science. And eventually there's nothing you don't know about Doppler. And why? Because you just prepare to throw a lot of time at it. And I mean, to make this little circuit, I actually had to throw almost half a day to a day at it because when the program started, it kind of worked, but then I thought, ah, oh, I think about it. Here's an easier way to make it work. So let's just have a look at what my final um, program looked like. Well, here we see the Thunny program. I called it um, Sound One Two. So from the machine, I imported PIN. We we're going to use PINs, pulse width of modulation, and analog digital conversion. Then I, in an array, put the scale of notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it started with middle C, and there were the frequencies of each note. So I imported time because we we're going to... Uh, perhaps use a delay. I don't know. Yes, I did sleep for a certain delay, which I said half a minute, a uh, half a second. Delay equals 0.5 or half a second. Then we made an array none of 12. We put none into 12 different things. And then for X in range 0 to 12, we filled the array with nuns. And all that did was it initialized the nine pins. I could have just made it up to nine, the nine pins we were going to use. And on those pins named 0 to 9, I put those nine LEDs. So this could have been nine. It would have worked perfectly fine. Then we set our duty cycle to half the time on half the time off each wave. Now here's the part that looks a bit new, and this is the only part that I haven't used before, that you haven't seen before. At V out, which was pin number 26, I read the analog digital. So we'd made tw pin 26 ADs analog to digital conversion. So here we read the actual amount of light that's reaching the photoresistor. We made the top, I measured the what. Um, what the reading was at when it was very light and when it was very dark. If it's very light, the, the computer read 50,000 and bottom was 30. Then I found the difference between top and bottom and divided it by the nine notes. And then um, the note was the integer of the V out minus the bottom divided by diff. <laughs> Okay, there's a little bit of maths here. What I'm doing, integer makes it a whole number. V out was what we read actually minus the bottom, which is 30, and we divided by um, the difference, which is how much it goes up the, the scale. If you take that minus that and divide it by 9, that's the difference. So what is that? 20 divided by 20,000 divided by 9. It's about 3,000 each. And so we're simply saying for every 3,000 that we go up, we raise it by a note. Then we printed um, whatever note we were registering. And then we made the pin high of that particular note. And then we played on pulse with modulation, that is pin number 15, we played a, a particular note. Say, say it was C, we played 261 here. So here we just played the notes, then we slipped 
we left the note on for half a second and then we turn the um, light off so there, so just to go over it again we read the analog reading we had already pre measured the top note was 50,000 that's as high as the, when it's very light when it's dark it's that we divided the 50 minus the 30 by 9. That gave us how much each note. If we wanted 9 notes between the top and the bottom. If we wanted 12 notes, we would have put 12 there. And we called that the difference. And then we measured what we actually got V out, v out minus the 30,000 and divided by the difference, which was about 3,000. And we got what note was actually registering on our wand then we played the note we set the led appropriate to that note on high we played so we printed what it was we and just to see what it looked like and that prints it here in the shell part here we played it then we slipped and then we turned the array off so there is our program